There are two, uh, two big topics in this chapter, and uh, I've been focusing on the analysis of variance. The second topic is uh, matched pair analysis, and uh, we'll get into that later. I wanted to really um, delve into the analysis of variance. So with this video, I wanted to do sort of a recap of the, the main points of it. And so one of the things we're, we're measuring is capital R. And capital R measures the strength of the relationship between the categorical variable and the metric variable. And so the um, R is, uh, I mentioned this before, R is between 0 and 1. So there's no such thing as a negative relationship. There's no negativity here. But um, R equals 0 means no relationship. And so that's sort of like no correlation. But analysis of variance means literally that you have a uniform distribution across all the groups. So here's a categorical variable. These are supposed to be bars. They're all equally equal heights. Here are the categories, or the categorical variable. And you can call them groups if you want to. Here's the metric variable. It's what we're counting. So these have pretty much names, you know, like uh, um, well, region is the country in the past example. Or it could be hybrid A, hybrid B, hybrid C for seed corn, for example. Metric is something you count, you measure, like the violent crime rates or the bushels per acre. And when there's no relationship whatsoever, that means that essentially it's uniformly distributed. In other words, there's no change on the metric between these. And so, um, there's, there's really the category has no effect on the output, the metric. No effect, there's no relationship. However, um, we look at the other example, r equal to 1 is the um, opposite extreme. That means there's a very strong relationship. And uh, I'm really not sure exactly what that would mean if you would actually ever, ever see that um, calculated. I, I guess I haven't thought about it until now. What would R equal 1 really look like? But you would see, uh, in a strong relationship, you would see kind of an exaggeration here in the uh, histogram. In other words, the, uh, each different group uh, has a far different output value, and so this has a strong influence on the metric variable. So each category has a very strong influence affecting it. And so as you approach one, you get these really exaggerated um, histograms. Now, um, that's sort of a visual idea of what, <laughs> what it means to have a, a, a no relationship or weak relationship where these are virtually equal and a very strong relationship when these are, are exaggerated. So, um, let's see. I guess um, you would see, it just occurred to me, when r would equal to 1, that means the residual sum of squares is 0. That means that, that every observation in each category has the same score. And so in this category, if, if all those had the same exact score number, um, rather than this being the average in that category, if that happened across the board, in other words, if each state in each region had the same crime rate, so in other words, if you go to the mid-Atlantic states and they all have this crime rate, and you go to the south, southern states, they have this crime rate. If it's the same within each uh, region of the country, but different among the regions, then that would be r equal to 1. It would be a perfect relationship, I guess you might say. Um, so anyway, the, uh, just like with the correlation coefficient, there's uh, you know, subjective degrees of relationship here. And um, so I think our, our textbook goes along with this. If r is greater than 0 0.70, or maybe it's 0 0.75, I think it's 0.75, then that means there is a strong relationship. Again, don't call it, uh, please don't call it correlation. I'll, I'll dock you for that. Because um, correlation comes from a regression analysis, not from analysis of variance. 
if R is between 0.30 and 0.70, then we have a moderate relationship. And if it's uh, less than 0.25, um, we have a weak relationship. And if it's in between here, well, just use your judgment. I would say if R came out to be 0.72, we'd call it moderate. If it's 0.73, we'd call it strong, whatever it's closest to. So that's, um, that's really kind of subjective. This is what our textbook says is strong, moderate, and weak. Now, um, just like with the correlation coefficient, though, when you square this number, you get something that, that takes on a little more meaning. So R squared measures the... Um, the percent of the data, um, how should I put this, <laughs> I'm kind of winging it here. It measures the, the percent or the amount of the data um, attributed to the relationship between the category and the metric variable. It measures the um, proportion, or you could call it percent if you wrote it in percent form, proportion of the data um, effects of the data uh, effects due to the categorical variable. For example, in that uh, textbook example, uh, R squared proportion was 0.24. If the hypothesis test had, had rejected null hypothesis, in other words, if the relationship was real, then R squared equals 0 to 0.24 would mean that 24% of this data is, is explained by the relationship between the categorical variable, which is the region of the country, and the violent crime rate. In other words, 24% was based upon the region of the country affecting the violent crime rate, and 76% is due to other residual factors, such as you know, poverty, education, uh, job opportunities, that sort of thing, whatever goes into crime rates. So um, R and R squared are uh, measures of, of this relationship that are important there. And, uh, and finally, the, the hypothesis test simply uh, is measuring do we have a difference between categories? Are at least two categories significantly different? That's when you reject the null hypothesis. So the p-value is very small, reject null hypothesis, it means that there are at least two categories and groups that are significantly different from one another. If you fail to reject, that means the differences you see are considered to be due to random effects. It's not strong enough to be statistically significant. So there's sort of a, a recap of that information and now I'll go on to some uh, textbook example problems.